Help us with this because we're, we've watched we've watched the tech stocks stage somewhat of a rebound. The question I, I wonder is whether the world, the private world that you're living in, whether you think that that tech stocks or, or private tech stocks have effectively been marked properly since then, because there's a lot of venture capital money and private equity money in this space, but it's unclear whether those marks match what's going on in the public markets. Andrew, you couldn't be more on the mark. I mean, uh, I am really concerned by some of the valuations that are being applied to the later stage uh, tech valuations in, in uh, a multitude of, uh, of uh, private portfolios. And uh, it's a reflection of the enormous amount of capital that's in the hands now of hedge funds who are investing in this area, plus all the obvious uh, uh, later stage players that are uh, you know, all excited by what they had seen in the euphoria of the market earlier. And uh, it takes a while for a market decline to permeate down into the private market. But what surprises me more than anything, Andrew, is the uh, brilliance in the, in the FANG stocks you've been talking about. Because at this very moment, there is probably the greatest pressure there's been in the last decade, maybe two decades, for antitrust legislation. I mean, I heard uh, uh, Senator Blumenthal the other day uh, give a whole, uh, not lecture, but discussion about what's going on in the Senate. Uh, uh, Senator Klobuchar, you heard uh, David Cicilline in the, in the House has had a, a, an investigation going on for the last two years and just came out two weeks ago with a 450-page report. And uh, I, I honestly have read a, a reasonable part of it and uh, uh, it's a dramatic indictment of the competitiveness that these companies have. And uh, you would think that there's going to be some kind of legislation, but the market doesn't even but, care. But, Alan, I, I mean, would argue uh, to you, and you may disagree with me, that that wouldn't necessarily be a bearish call on these stocks, which is to say that even if they ultimately are broken up, there might be more value there. I mean, if I told you you could buy one stock today that you had to hold for the next 10 or 20 years and you couldn't exit it for 20 years, I imagine you'd still buy something on that one of the fangs. Wouldn't you buy Microsoft or Amazon? Yeah, well, Microsoft isn't actually in the fangs, but uh, uh, Amazon now has such a large percentage of the, uh, the, the online retail and, and such a large part of overall retail in this country. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I understand your argument, but it uh, flies in the face that, you know, we've our antitrust legislation is so outdated. I mean, going back to the late 1800s and the early 1900s, and even though we passed things like the FTC and the Robertson patent, I, I'll give you an interesting point, which I didn't realize till read is there have been over 500 acquisitions by these companies in the last uh, 10 years, maybe it's less than 10, and only three have had any questions about it. They just all went through automatically. If that whole approach changes, I mean, it will change the dynamic of that uh, uh, of that business somewhat. I mean, it's got to, whether it's broken up or whether they shift and spin out activities, or most importantly, to me at least, the way they solve it is to make the uh, data available in a ubiquitous way so that uh, people are uh, have access to the same data at the same time, uh, that would be a, a step forward.